Good evening and welcome to tonight's Marshall Reddick presentation on multifamily units and apartments. My name is Scott Pastel. I'm the uh, VP of Marketing here at Marshall Reddick and I'm joined by a, uh, a few amazing guests that, uh, that are a large part of the Marshall Reddick organization and you'll also be hearing from tonight. Um, we've got Denise Fuentes, who is one of our real estate advisors uh, out here in Newport Beach, and um, her role is to help any and all clients um, from very, very beginning to very, very experienced uh, create a plan on what types of properties and what markets um, and what, what options uh, um, you know, each individual has in place. So Denise is uh, here with me, and you'll be hearing from her in a little bit. And I've also got Terry Duffy, and many of you may already know Terry. Terry and Ken are our representatives in the Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Florida market. So they're joining us all the way on the East Coast while we're out here on the West Coast, kind of spanning across the country. Um, and just kind of looking at the list tonight, it looks like we've got people really just all over, um, a little over 200 people scheduled. So I appreciate you making the time to be here. Uh, in the next hour, I'm gonna go through um, some of the techniques on purchasing multifamily units. I'll be sharing with you um, some of the calculations and formulas. Um, be going over just some due diligence and a little bit of research on how we evaluate multi-units. Uh, I'll be going over basically, you know, what what types of investors um, and and what goals do you know multi-units make a good fit for. And then we'll be going into two of our markets. One, of course, is the Cape Coral Fort Myers market, and that's where Terry will be um, will be going through all the details on her market, and we'll also be going over the San Antonio Texas market, two markets that are absolutely ideal for multi-unit uh, investing. So we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we are recording the presentation, and we will be emailing out the recording tomorrow afternoon. Um, you'll also have uh, Denise's contact information and also Terry's contact information. And we certainly encourage you folks to take the time to uh, not only research and evaluate some of these properties that we're, that we're highlighting, but also have an opportunity to talk to Denise, our advisors, and also um, Terry to get a little more information, pick their brains, um, ask them questions, and then hopefully we can help you guys uh, accomplish your real estate investing goals and exceed any expectations that you have. So to start off with, on just kind of some little background on Marshall Reddick, those of you that might be new to our organization, maybe this is the first time that you've ever seen a webinar or um, had any contact with us. So I just want to mention who and what is Marshall Reddick Real Estate. Marshall Reddick is a full service residential real estate broker, property manager, and also private money lender. So that's kind of a lot of things all wrapped into, into one company. Um, essentially, we're a full stop shop for all things residential real estate. And we do have our licenses in several different markets across the country, including California, Texas, and, and a couple others as well. But overall, um, we provide everything from soup to nuts when it comes to real estate investing. And those of you that already own investment properties realize the importance of having a great team. And that team consists of great realtors, property managers, mortgage lenders, insurance agents, and Marshall Reddick has everything under one roof. So, you know, whether you're looking to buy property, sell property, rent property out, um, as long as it's in one of the 16 markets that we're located, we'll be able to help you do it. And I'll share with you in a moment uh, the map of all the markets we're located in for those of you that maybe haven't had a chance to look at property on our website yet. So Denise is a very, very important part of our organization and she's one of our real estate advisors. Um, that means that not only is she a realtor who helps local clients here in California buy and sell property, um, she has a real estate license, but like all of our uh, advisors here at Marshall Reddick, she's intimately involved in working with investors of all types. Um, so Denise has a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, experience working with a lot of our investors here at Marshall Reddick. And not, not, all, you know, not all realtors are created equal, just like, like many service providers. Um, but here at Marshall Reddick, our advisors um, have a 
certain level of experience and knowledge in real estate investing. So um, I'll let Denise kind of give a, l a little bit about her background. Some of you may have already talked to her um, leading up to the webinar. You might have gotten a call from her. So I definitely encourage you folks to have an opportunity after the presentation to set up a call with Denise and, you know, take all your questions from tonight. Uh, take advantage of that, that, that consultation phone call, which all of our consulting is free, by the way. Um, so I want, uh, yeah, I want to let Denise kind of give a little background on herself and explain kind of, you know, what her role as an advisor is. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Scott, for that introduction. I am so glad that you can join us tonight for this very informative, comprehensive webinar. You're going to find a lot of great information, I am sure. Um, my role, as um, Scott said, with Marshall Reddick as an advisor, in addition to being lic licensed in um, California as a realtor, um, I uh, basically assess your current situation and what it is that you're looking to accomplish as an investor. And from that, um, I make recommendations based on that um, as to what options are available to you by working with us that will help you maximize your returns and work towards your uh, investment goals. Um, I usually work with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, usually figuring out the first um, few things about your situation, getting the big picture together as what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and we'll schedule two phone calls. The first one is to find out all about you and your current situation and where you want to head to uh, financially, and then the second phone call would be uh, presenting some options to you and going over uh, what we, we can offer you and uh, introducing you to all the key players to help you accomplish your goals. Um, so a little bit about me when I'm not working. Um, I'm, I've been married for 17 years. I'm a mother of two children. I have uh, personally owned um, and been a landlord before um, with investment property. Love real estate. Real estate is my passion. And I love to cook, dance, and uh, spend a little time reading and, and all the time I can get with my family. Um, so that's a little bit about me. As Scott said, towards the end, uh, I'm going to have my information. I look forward to connecting with you for a complimentary consultation um, to help you uh, make a, a strategy or create the next step for you to move forward with your investment um, uh, plans and so forth. Um, I hope you enjoy tonight, and I look forward to talking to you. Thank you, Denise. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's. I felt, you know, from an investor, being an investor myself and, and going through that process from, you know, how do you get started and then how do you expand your portfolio and, and how do you um, scale your portfolio and what are, what are certain techniques to maybe um, increase income, lower expenses, you know, increase your asset protection. Uh, it's so beneficial to talk to a human being, a knowledgeable one who has been through the process and understands all the ins and outs. So I'm glad that you guys got a chance to meet Denise and I hope that you have a chance to talk to her more after the presentation. So when it comes to investing, I think a question that a lot of us have to ask ourselves is really where does it actually make financial sense, real estate, and specifically multifamily units, which we're here tonight to talk about. So basically the main driver behind all of our research and why we're in certain markets and why we're not in others are, are the seven key points that you can see here on your screen. And at the very, very top of that list, you see the job market. So what we evaluate in terms of why we're in, in, in not just certain cities or states, but also neighborhoods and, and individual properties themselves um, is the demand for jobs. And the two of the markets that we're talking tonight about, which are Florida and Texas, happen to be some of the most business-friendly states in the entire country. Um, these, are, these are locations where we're seeing the fastest job growth rate. We're seeing um, major employers adding um, you know, more jobs than just about any other market. And we're seeing incomes going up. We're seeing rents going up um, without it being, like you can see there on number three, without it being tied to just one industry. So. Um, the job market can certainly have an impact on the vacancy and our, you know, ability to get a tenant back into the property after one moves out. Um, certainly, you know, the condition of the property is important and the photography and the advertising. 
Um, but what it really comes down to it, um, we have to be in large metropolitan markets where we have the largest amount of rental pool possible. And a lot of that all really all comes from the jobs and not just jobs in one industry, but a, an economic diversity across many, many, many different industries. And in a little bit, you know, we're going to hear from Terry, who's going to talk about the Cape Coral Fort Myers market and just some of the growth happening, the, the, the economic development in the area, um, and large companies like, like Hertz Rental Corporation, which is located uh, in one of their headquarters in, in Cape Coral, Florida. So um, the unemployment rate is also a very big factor. And in both of these locations, San Antonio and Cape Coral, we're looking at about a three to three and a half percent unemployment rate. So lower than the national average, which is a very big key indicator for us in knowing that this property that we're looking at is not just going to be um, easier to, I guess you could say easier to rent out, or it's not going to just have such a large rental pool today, but in five, 10, 15 years from now, what's the, what is the economic outlook for this property to continue seeing growth and value and growth and rent and jobs stand behind all that. So we look at uh, job growth rate, we look at economic diversity and part of economic diversity comes from buying a property in a large metropolitan market. So our strategy is always to locate properties that are in suburbs of large metropolitan markets. Part of that um, as investors, we look at where can we get the highest cash on cash return possible? Where can we get the highest return on investment? Where can we get the most bang for our buck? So housing affordability is extremely important, not just for the tenants who are looking at renting our properties, but also for us owners who are looking at purchasing real estate. Um, you know, if we can stretch our dollars out um, and, and buy properties that are, let's say below the national median home price, then that's certainly going to be something that we look at. Right now, the U.S. average home uh, is sitting around $260,000 to $275,000 is the U.S. average um, from the end of last year. So with that said, we look at a lot of properties in markets where where can we get a great property that will attract a great tenant for potentially less than what, you know, what we might find in our own backyard or, or you know, in other locations. So um, you'll see that uh, another thing that we look at is the percentage of the rental income divided into the purchase price. And that's called the rent to price ratio. And if you take the monthly rent and divide it into the property's purchase price, if you can get even close to 1%, then you're on track for a very, very high positive cash flow. So, you know, I mean, in our market where, where I'm located currently right now in Orange County, um, we're lucky to find a property where the monthly rent is half of 1% of the purchase price. However, luckily we're able to expand into other markets where we have teams like Terry, and you'll find the properties that have monthly rent very close to, and if, if not in some cases, hitting that 1% rule which provides for great cash flow. So it's a good little rule of thumb that, uh, that we look at. So in these affordable markets, it's definitely more, more achievable than in our higher uh, expense markets here, at least in California. Um, what states are landlord friendly? So um, especially with multi-units where we may have two, four, five, ten tenants in one, in one building, uh, property management is a very, very key component to ensuring that we have the highest income and we have, you know, we're, our asset is basically being managed as best as possible. So um, with that said, we went and, you know, look at states like Texas and Florida where the laws are definitely more in favor of the landlord than they are for the tenant. And what I mean by that is, you know, you're not going to see rent control in these markets um, when let's say there's a, you know, a tenant that moves out of a property, the landlord or the property manager has more time to return the deposit than they do out here in California. California gives us 21 days. Um, you're going to see in, in, in states like Texas and Florida, um, 
the landlord's property managers have more time to return the deposit. There's less red tape involved in that process. R increasing rents here in California, there's all kinds of laws on um, how often you can increase rents and, and how much notice you have to give. Whereas other states, there's just much less red tape. So definitely smart to be looking at these states uh, to expand a portfolio. Um, strong education. So um, there are major universities and colleges in both Cape Coral and San Antonio. And the reason that um, having prominent schools, not just public schools, but also um, you know, four-year universities, because these schools attract students that become future employees entering the workforce. And um, with large schools, with prominent schools, um, you know, these schools are, are adding jobs directly after, after college. So um, it also attracts more people who end up staying in that local market to end up renting or buying property. So we look at some of the schools and we'll be covering some of the major schools in both of the, the markets that we're talking about tonight. And then last but not least is having reliable property management. So we have a team in each market um, that does everything from leasing to management to maintenance and repairs to ensure that we have a full service coverage on everything needed for our properties. So um, on your screen, you see a list of 16 different cities. These are all of the locations where Marshall Reddick has teams and operations located in. Um, I've, I've chosen Fort Myers and Cape, Cape Coral and Fort Myers are, are part of the same metropolitan. I've chosen Fort Myers and San Antonio tonight um, because both of these markets have proven to be ideal for multi-unit investing over the years. Um, Terry, who's on the call with us tonight, has been our area rep in, in Fort Myers for 11 years, no, excuse me, 14 years since 2004. Can't count the years anymore. 14 years, um, Terry has been our area rep. So she's a long, rich history with Marshall Reddick and has worked with hundreds and hundreds of our clients. Um, there is a need for multi-unit housing in Fort Myers and Cape Coral. And um, in a little bit, when we show you some of the investment properties, you'll find that a lot of them are much, much newer than, than probably the houses that we live in. There was a lot of building and a lot of development in the early 2000s. And that's a great benefit for us investors to be able to buy a property that may only be 10, 15 years old. Obviously, the, the roof, the structure, a lot of things in the property are going to be newer, ends up sometimes translating to less maintenance over time. So we've got some newer properties to share with you. Um, and then San Antonio is also a market high demand for multi-unit housing. There's four military bases, major U.S. military bases in, in San Antonio. Um, and... Um, a lot of a lot of demand for a little bit more, I guess you could say, affordable properties, um, which really may only be a hundred or two hundred dollars a month less than your comparable single-family home. But um, same thing in San Antonio. A lot of newer developments, a lot of newer multi-unit developments, and we at, Mar 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 at Marshall Reddick, we really like newer properties. It, 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 um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years old, uh, you know, it just provides for, for less ongoing maintenance um, as an investor. So I'd like to start off with a poll. Uh, we're going to have two poll questions tonight. Um, these are anonymous polls. You guys will have the ability to select your responses right there directly on your screen. But it's just fun to kind of see, you know, we have a large audience tonight. It's always kind of fun to see, um, you know, kind of what everybody's feedback is. So our first question is, um, which option below most closely resembles you as an investor? As I said, we've got about 200 people on the webinar tonight. So good for us to kind of get a sense of people's experience level. So the first option is I do not own any investment properties at all. Or the second option is I own one to three single family properties, uh, but no multi-units yet. Or maybe you own four or more single family homes, but no multi-units yet. And then the last option is I own multi-units already, but looking to expand my portfolio. So I'll give you guys about 10 seconds to choose your option. And then we'll share the, the results again. It's all anonymous, but it will help us to kind of see the variety of, uh, of people on the call. Wow, 
Wow, we've got 84% uh, have voted. That's pretty high. Yeah. Thank you guys for um, for being attentive. We really appreciate that. I'll give you a few more seconds. <clears throat> Looks like most of you have voted by now. All right. So uh, from all the responses that came in, it looks like 34% are new, don't own any investment property yet. 26% have between one and three single family properties. 19% have four or more single family properties, but no multi-units. And then 21% own multi-units. So that is, uh, I would say, a pretty even split across the board. So. Thank you guys. That really helps us kind of get a sense for, you know, who's, who's on the call tonight. So I'm going to go over uh, just a, a little bit of, of facts about multifamily housing that some of you may already be familiar with, um, or maybe this is kind of new information to you. Um, <clears throat> I have on here less competition. What I mean by less competition is that uh, as investors, if we're looking at a home, to purchase as an investment, in some cases, we may be competing with local homeowners looking at that property as well. Um, we have to remember that um, whatever market it is we're looking, that property is on Zillow, on Redfin, on Realtor, and can be seen by anybody in the world. So chances are, if we're locating a good single family home in a good neighborhood with good school districts, um, there may be other local homeowners looking at it as well. And as investors, we kind of have our, our, our financials in mind and, and we're making a financial investment. So the numbers have to make sense for us. Um, what I mean by that is uh, there's usually much less emotion involved for us as investors when purchasing an investment property. That said, homeowners looking at a property, um, there could be a lot more emotion involved. And for them, uh, you know, they may be okay paying 3% or 5% above asking because for them, they may have uh, grandma in the neighborhood or friends in the neighborhood, or they may really need to be enrolling their kids in that school district. So um, when it comes to multi-unit housing, uh, it's safe to say that only investors are looking at purchasing that property, especially as we get higher in units. Um, you may see in rare cases, an owner who purchases it to live in one unit and rent the rest out. Um, financing these days is, is, is not quite as attractive for that type of, uh, for that type of goal. Um, so with investment property, less people looking gives us the ability to maybe, um, make more patient decisions. Um, uh, it's definitely takes more experienced investor to assess and mitigate the risks on vacancies, on maintenance. And then um, in certain markets, there's just much less supply um, by units. But what's great is that economies of scale kicks in. And as we go higher in units, um, we tend to see less, less cost per unit, um, thanks to the economies of scale. Um, but with that said, <clears throat> the benefit is that the units themselves are not going to rent for less because there's more units in that particular property. Whereas as a buyer, we may be buying it with, you know, lower cost per square foot or, or, or lower price per square foot decreases for us as we get higher in units where the units themselves will rent out no matter what, no matter how many units there are in that building. Um, also, I have on here the property management fees. Um, as you get higher, let's say four units, six units, eight units, 10 units, um, our property managers typically charge a slightly reduced management fees when uh, managing a multi-unit property. So there's a few calculations and formulas to keep in mind. Um, many of you may already be familiar with the cap rate, also known as capitalization rate. Cap rate analyzes a property without any bias on the buyer's financing. So the interest rate, down payment, mortgage is not a factor in cap rate. So the calculation on your screen there is the annual net operating income divide, divided by the cost. So what is annual net operating income? Well, you start with the gross annual operating income, which is just basically the total rents on an annual basis. 
and then you would subtract all the operating expenses. Mortgage payment is not an operating expense. Mortgage payment is considered debt service. So what you would deduct and what's, what's included in operating expenses would be annual property taxes, annual landlord insurance, um, your, if there are, if there's a homeowners association and the owner is paying the HOA dues, um, most of the, um, it's kind of a mix of properties that we see in HOAs and some that are and some that aren't. So you would deduct any homeowners association fees that are paid by the owner, property management fees, and then also your reserve or your estimate for maintenance. So then taking the gross annual income and subtracting the annual operating expenses, we're left with the annual net operating income. And then we would divide that by the cost. A lot of the properties that we're looking at tonight on our presentation have cap rates between six and 10%, which as investors we know is, is definitely on the higher side. Cash on cash return and return on investment both take into account the mortgage payment. So depending on your down payment and your interest rate, that's also going to affect your cash on cash return and return on investment. So cash on cash return is your annual before tax cash flow. So we're not taking into account um, any, any tax savings or, or, or um, depreciation or, or tax write-offs. You're looking at your, your annual cash flow divided by how much money you spent to purchase the property. So that's, that's explained on here as total cash invested. Your total cash invested is going to be a sum of your down payment plus your closing costs if you, you, and lender fees um, included, as well as any initial fix-up costs if you have to do a little work before renting the property. So that would be your total cash invested. Um, the annual before tax cash flow is, and I'll share with you and we'll go over some property examples, but essentially that's all the expenses I mentioned before, as well as mortgage payment and vacancy. So you're looking at all of your fixed expenses plus your variable estimated expenses on an annual basis. And then return on investment takes into account the profit that you make from buying the property. Um, so we do have formulas and what I would suggest you to do is after the presentation, go on our website, go to the invest tab, look at properties and you can actually see exactly the formulas and, and how each property's ROI and cash on cash return were calculated. Um, but return on investment takes into account appreciation and value, cash flow throughout the life of owning that property, um, principal pay down, so the balance of the loan decreasing that's being paid for by the tenants because it's a positive cash flow property. So for now, just as long as you know those formulas, that's good. And we'll share with you, you know, some example properties here in a little bit. Part of the ROI calculation that I just shared with you on the last screen was the profit. So we use the, the CAPE formula, I think we coined it. I don't, I don't know if anybody else has used it before, but it's the accumulated net cash flow from the entire duration of the property, plus appreciation, plus principal pay down, minus selling expenses. And you see it says typically 9%. So we estimate that when you sell a property, you will have to pay it maybe close to somewhere around 9% or less of the future value of that property, which is about factoring about five to 6% for realtor commissions, and then about another three or 4% for any remodeling or repairs that, that you may decide to do before selling the property to enhance the value. So this is a screenshot on our website of, of, of one of the properties um, that we're gonna share with you tonight. So this just kind of shows you the total breakdown is already there on our website. And you can adjust the interest rates and down payments as you see fit, and all the formulas are built in. So definitely spend time on the website analyzing the financial calculator. So what is your investment criteria? And that is one of the things that Denise and our real estate advisors um, help each individual hands-on, evaluate and define what criteria makes the most sense for them. 
it's important to look at, you know, how much with purchase price can we afford? How much savings do we have? How much are we qualified for in a, a loan? So what is, what is our price range? Um, property class, which I'm going to go over after this, the difference between A, B, and C class properties, um, the type of the property, the condition of the property, all of the details of a property um, can be evaluated. And we have a system where based on each investor and um, based on a series of their experience and capital to invest, um, risk tolerance, our advisors can ask a series of questions and help you determine exactly what criteria makes the most sense for you. Uh, thanks to our property management department, um, we were able to analyze tons of data across hundreds of properties in all 16 of our markets, and we found a lot of common trends in terms of the demographics of, of tenants in each property class. And um, the basis for the property class is what is the median home price in that particular market and how does the price of the property that we're looking at purchasing uh, compare to the median? Is it below the median, above the median? And we have a, a property rating scale that you can find in our Reddick property rating ebook that teaches you exactly how to evaluate property classes. Um, in fact, on your, on your, on your GoToWebinar dashboard, you'll see on your control panel that there's a, uh, a section that says handouts. If you click on that, it opens up and you can download our property rating ebook if you haven't already had a chance to read it. One of the pages in the ebook, it's about 40 pages, so it's not, not a very long read, but one of the pages is, is the screen that you see in front of you. Um, through all of our analysis, what we realized was that property class, uh, the determination was really more to do with the location than it was to do with the condition of the property or the age of the property or the square footage of the property. So really the location in terms of the local school districts, the job market, um, the crime rate, those factors played a much, much higher role in determining property class than the aesthetics of the property and the, the physical physicality of that property. Um, but what types of tenants live in different property classes? So you can see in front of you, um, the, the bottom line is that in higher property classes, we tend to see tenants with um, higher job stability, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, you know, longer, longer job history with their employer, higher income earning, more white collar working class professionals who specialize in a particular career. Um, so with that, we tend to see over time a little bit less vacancy as well. Um, because of that job stability. Second, um, in higher property classes, we tend to see tenants who tend to take better care of property. And what we've noticed from a property management standpoint is that in higher property classes, we may have seen purchased homes in the past or lived in a home that they owned or plan to buy and occupy and purchase a home in the future. And with that experience and, and, and with that care and attention tends to come a little bit less maintenance overall in higher property classes as well too. Um, obviously we're very cash flow driven and you see at the bottom here that A class properties tend to see more appreciation, B class tend to see a mixture of both and C class tend to have more cash flow. Um, and through our experience in property management, we're able to mitigate as much of the maintenance and vacancy as possible. But um, it's just good to have an idea of what types of tenants live in, live in different types of properties. So these are the recommended maintenance and vacancy estimates that you'll see on every property on our website. And I do wanna stress that these are estimates. And these percentages are percentages of the monthly rent. So if you have, let's say a fourplex and the total, total monthly rent um, comes out to $5,000 a month, well, if it's an A-class property, then you would take 5,000 times 8%, and you're looking at $400. So what we're suggesting is to set aside $400 every month in a, for a maintenance reserve, because you might go months and months and months without any maintenance. 
But when you're analyzing a property in the very beginning before you actually execute on purchasing it, you have to be able to use realistic numbers in terms of your estimates for maintenance and vacancy. So um, the, top, the top graph there is for residential one to four unit, the one below it are our estimates for larger apartment buildings with five units and above. And again, this would be percentages of the monthly rent um, because in many months you may not have any maintenance and vacancy, but it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and you wanna make sure that you have reserves to cover those months of maintenance and vacancy. So this is a section of the financial calculator on our website that you can see the numbers are already, already built in to the bottom line cash flow. And the way that we evaluate the vacancy is if you take one of those percentages based on the property class, if you take the percentage and you multiply it by the number of days in a year, those are the, that's the amount of days that you're factoring in for vacancy ahead of time um, depending on the property class. So let's look at a B class, uh, or this is example on here is an A class property at 8%. So if we're, if we're building in an 8% reserve in our calculations, we're basically saying, we're looking at the bottom line and saying, this is our bottom line cash flow. This is our net cash flow, assuming that each unit will see a 30-day vacancy every single year. And that's pretty conservative because we may have tenants who stay for two, three, four, five, six years or longer. Um, but we like using very conservative numbers. And as I said, and pro higher property class or, or Lower property classes, higher estimated reserves for maintenance and vacancy. Um, you've got the um, handout on your control panel you can download. You can also download it on our website. Everything pertaining to property classes is in this book that we wrote several years ago um, with tons of data to support it. I hope you guys have a chance to read it. Um, I certainly know that you'll be able to learn a lot from it. Uh, when it comes to financing, um, when we're looking at um, two to four unit properties, the uh, minimum down payment on conventional financing for a two to four unit property is 25%. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac set these guidelines and um, they recently raised the bar on, um, on the down payments when you get up to having more mortgages in your own name. So now if you have um, anywhere from zero to five mortgages, if you're looking at purchasing your first through sixth property, you can still put a minimum of 25% down on a two to four unit. If you're looking at purchasing a property and it's gonna be your seventh, eighth, ninth, or 10th mortgage, then they do require a minimum 30% down on two to four unit properties. These are residential financing terms set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Commercial is anything five units and above, and we do have commercial lenders. Um, the financing is completely different. Um, it's not 30 year fixed interest rate. Um, it's usually a 20 or 25 year term. Um, there's usually adjustable uh, five, seven or 10 year um, adjustable rates that usually end up going to LIBOR after that term. But um, safe to say that we would have to have a conversation with you over the phone to talk more about commercial financing since the options are, are numerous and, and a bit more complex. But we do have commercial lenders that we can recommend as well. So when, uh, I already kind of touched on the factors, so I'm gonna jump right into Cape Coral, Florida and introduce you guys to Terry Duffy. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Cape Coral is, is one of the strongest job markets. Um, Forbes recently named it as one of the 10 hottest real estate markets for last year. Um, still seeing a lot of job growth and, and continuing in an upward direction. Um, unemployment rate, and this was uh, at the end of last year, 3.7. It's probably closer to 3.5% now, um, but a very, very diverse economy. Um, it, and as Terry will tell you, a lot more than people retiring or touring. And they do get a tremendous amount of 
tourism, but there is a, a massive market for full-time residents. So um, you can see on your screen here a um, beautiful looking couple. That's Terry, Terry Duffy and her husband, Ken. Um, they have flown out to California probably 15 or 20 times in the last decade to um, host events for our clients. I will mention that um, our, uh, they're flying out here in October. And out here, I mean to Orange County and Los Angeles, California. So if you're in the area, uh, Terry and Ken will be out here October 9th, 10th, and 11th um, hosting events, which we'll be putting on our website shortly. Um, but um, I want to, um, as, as um, Terry's been patiently waiting, I want to introduce you to Terry, who has worked with hundreds of our investors and um, is absolute pleasure to work with, loves her job. And uh, Terry, if you're... Um, if you're ready, I'll let you take it away from here. Well, hello to everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, as Scott said, I've been with the Marshall Reddit Group since 2004. I am 100% a buyer's agent, and I, unlike most of the, um, you know, other agents, I think in the company, I'm I've always been exclusively only with Marsha Reddick. I've done a few, you know, I do a few outside stuff for friends and family, but um, I, can't, I do all my concentration strictly for you guys. So I've got a pretty good team lined up here. Try to make it as easy as possible with for you if you decide you want to purchase here. We have a full service property management company, and we've been through a few different ones over the years, and we've uh, landed with its Weicker Realty. Travis Desir is uh, not only the property management owner, he's also my broker. So I can stay very much hands on with what's going on between your properties when they get turned over to the property management company. They also offer uh, you know, a few different discounts for the Marshall Reddick group on, on top of that. So those are all in line. I have my inspectors. Um, once again, I've been through obviously a lot of trials and for different ones and I've landed with the ones I like best. So I have everything lined up for having inspections done, for getting insurance quotes, so I can be 100% your boots on the ground and do everything for you. So the only thing you have to worry about is just taking care of, you know, the financing if you're doing a loan. I just want everything to, to be as comfortable as it can be. So, um, and Kenny, my husband, he works directly with me. Uh, he's he's uh, very knowledgeable. He's a lieutenant at the fire department in Naples. And so he's got his... Uh, his pulse kind of on any everything that's going on as far as new building going on, everything that's happening in our area because he's out and about constantly seeing that stuff. So uh, Scott did mention a couple of things. Um, some of the, just the points of our market, our rental market has always been really strong. And I think it's probably stemmed from when we had such a, uh, back in the days when we had the crash, everybody knows that Florida crashed the hardest. So we also had the, you know, the longest journey back uphill. And we're, we've steadily been climbing that hill. We have not had a, you know, just a fire straight up like, you know, in the past, which is obviously we didn't want that. But um, the market stayed strong because so many people did lose their homes and they just, you know, are still, some people are still trying to get out from underneath the bad credit. So they cannot, you know, they, they can't qualify to buy new homes. Plus they got to be able to save the money to put the down payment down. Um, we have a lot of uh, seasonal people that come, you know, between, November and May, and so that increases that also. But um, we have it all year long. Our vacancy rate in Lee County is at about 4%, but our vacancy rate with our property management company is 2%. So it's extremely low. And, you know, I've done, I'm averaging about 50 deals a year with the Marshall Reddit group, and 90% of those are multifamily units. The duplexes are in huge demand down here. Um, they, they, you know, they, they rent faster than single family homes. Everybody just seems to, to want them. People will buy them and live in one side, rent out the other side. Some people will buy them and they'll, they'll let their college, you know, kids live in there, live in them. It's kind of all over the place, but they're just, they're just very popular. Um, Florida has no state income. Florida is one of the most landlord friendly states which is nice. Our unemployment is actually right around 3%. Um, we're going to Cape Coral. We're going to talk about Cape Coral and we're also going to talk about Lehigh. The properties I'm going to show you are in Lehigh. 
um, Cape Coral is west of uh, Fort Myers and Lehigh is east of Fort Myers. And so from one to the other, it's about a 30 minute drive just going across the bridge. And there's three different bridges that cross over from Fort Myers into Cape Coral. Cape Coral, um, obviously it's a Cape, so it's surrounded by water and everybody knows that where there's water, property values always, you know, maintain and go up over the years. There's a lot of expansions going on in Cape Coral. I'm going to give you two websites that are really good to go on for all kinds of information on our area. One of them is capecoral.net, capecoral.net, and the other is leecounty.org, leecounty.org. Lee County encompasses Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Lehigh, and then some smaller little cities uh, within within those that are like little suburbs also. So you can kind of get a, you know, a good, uh, and anything that's going on is gonna be on one of those uh, websites. Um, in Lehigh Acres, we tend to um, do a lot more right now as far as the duplexes. Cape Coral is a higher price point. There's a lot of new builds going on in Cape Coral. And the new build duplexes in Cape Coral are the ones that will cash flow. They are over the $320,000 mark. So Lehigh Acres is still, they're, you know, in the around, you know, 210 all the way up to the 300 mark. Um, but they, the Lehigh Acres ones, we get better cash flow on those due to the lower price point. And Lehigh Acres just had an increase in rents over this pa the past month so your standard three bedroom two bath two two you know one car garage for one for each unit or it can be called a two bedroom plus a den because the dens are always used for a third bedroom so they get the same amount of rent and those now are renting for about eleven hundred dollars per unit um so when we get to the properties we'll kind of go through that the uh uh, you can go on the Marshall Reddick website, and they've got the detailed market data packets. You can just get on there and read through them. You can download them. And anytime something new comes up uh, that we find, we send it into Scott, and then they add it to our data packet. So we keep the information updated on that. A little more growth going on here. Just uh, we he was talking about we are big in tourism. Obviously, it's it's huge, but we're our biggest employer is Lee. Uh, health and we've got two brand new hospitals being built right now one's a 44 million dollar hospital 200,000 square feet so it's non-stop we got you know 55 communities or they're I don't know what they're actually called they're like um, assisted living places and people can move in at 55 and they can stay there and they just kind of progress through however their health goes and they have the the medical attention as needed as they you know as, as they progress in their age and their health so um, we got a, a tech company here called Garner also that's a big employer so there's a lot of stuff and you might find some of that on Lee County also you can kind of Google all that stuff so but I want to go into the um, the properties because I know that that's these here this I'm gonna show you two duplexes in Lehigh this is my favorite one right here Eisenhower Boulevard is a really nice area in Lehigh it's um and they're doing a huge expansion uh, on two of the main roads in Lehigh right now. One is State Road 82, and they're turning that. It was a two-lane. It's going to a four-lane. And then another road is Homestead, and the same thing is going on there. So right now, a lot of people that live there are not happy just because they're having to deal with the construction going on. But it's, it's going to be massive and great for this area. And Eisenhower is just it's very convenient to get back and forth to, onto this main highway. Lehigh is about you know 10 to 15 minutes from the airport 10 to 15 minutes to get into Fort Myers and you know 30 minutes across the bridge to Cape Coral um, it's just uh, you know it's gonna be so much easier once they get this highway done but if you look at this the price on this this is um, the the lowest price duplex on the market right now um, at the 218.9 price and uh, the gross rents 2200 so 1100 per side is what this can get the monthly income, I mean, that's the big thing, $875. The cash on cash for our uh, our duplexes is always, you know, it's just good. It's very strong. Um, I think I've got about five duplexes listed on the Marsh Reddick website now. This is my favorite one. Um, I've been inside this. It's really clean. 
when you purchase our duplexes, they're not, not all of them are um, always rented. Most of them are. A lot of times the rents are lower than market value. And that just happens because they could be long-term tenants. They could be family in there. Um, sometimes when the sellers are going to sell, they just don't want to raise the rents right before they're selling because they would rather keep a, a tenant in place with even a lower rent just so you start out with income, you know, for the next for the next uh, owner. And then we can raise the rents either at renewal time or if they're month to month right now, we can raise them right after closing. And then I always, you know, um, when you go on the website, you can see I, I try to get as many photos as possible in there for you guys. And you can look at those. And then uh, there's always um, some small print at the bottom where I try to give you a description of what's going on, what the property looks like, if it's all tiled or if it's got tile and carpet and any extras that it may have. This is a similar one. Um, he's got a price a little bit higher, uh, $2,000 higher. Um, this one here, you can actually see where I've little stuff that I've written at the bottom. But once again, it's kind of the same. I go down, you got the rents, $2,200. The taxes, I get the taxes right off of the Lee County website. So, I mean, they're not always going to be exact, but they're going to be pretty close. The insurance, the same thing. Um, I usually send the properties to the insurance company and I get a quote. That can change because a lot of times uh, once you start with them, they call you and they get your personal information. And a lot of things change according to age and other stuff like that, you know, credit scores and everything like that. But those two, um, those two items are normally pretty, you know, pretty spot on. The HOA fees, I don't do anything with HOA fees because that takes money out of your pocket. Um, you'll see the management fee, our property management company charges uh, the Marshall Reddick. It's a, a discounted 8%. Normally here, the standard rate is 10%. Um, yeah, they're showing the vacancy rate, and the vacancy rate on these these B-rated properties is always at 10% on the Marsh Reddick website. Our vacancy rate, like I said, Lee County is 4%. With our property management company, it's 2%. So you can adjust that on the website, and you can play with that if you want to. But like Scott was saying, they take it kind of, it's more of a broad spectrum, you know, countrywide or however they, they, you know, they kind of figure that out. The leasing fee, our company charges 50% of the first month's rent, where the norm is 100% of the first month's rent. But once again, you can look at the, the monthly income at 867, great cash on cash for these. Now the next property is a little bit different. This is a triplex, and this is in Fort Myers. This is an area called San Carlos Park, which is literally like, maybe 12 to 15 minutes from where I live. And I live in an uh, area called Estero, which is um, south of Fort Myers. But this is a really good area. It's an area that holds its value. It's very much in demand. And I, I was in this place. It's a very unique property because one of the units um, has five bedrooms. If in back of this building, there's a, a big three car garage um, for the for the tenants. It's just, a, it's, it's a neat, neat, neat place, but the monthly income here, $1,348, nine bedrooms, four baths. It's all brick. It's just, it's pretty cool. It's got a brand new roof that was just put on this year also. So, you know, the price on this is $488. i have actually um, uh, talked to these. They're a little bit negoti negotiable on their price. They're not huge. Nobody down here... Uh, accepts anything that's considered like a low ball offer because our market is so strong. So uh, if you're looking to, you know, to bottom line things, that does not work here. Um, only because like right now there's only about, I think 12 duplexes even left available in Lehigh. And um, the ones that are on our website are the lowest priced ones that I've been to, you know, so I, I'm, I know what's going on with them. Some of them, if they get overpriced, they sit for a while, and, and I don't really bother with them um, if I think that they're, you know, kind of gouging in prices. So that's kind of our area in a nutshell. Um, our biggest thing we have going for us, I think, is we just have, a, like I said, a very strong rental market, and all of our properties cash flow, and they cash flow good. So if you guys are interested in any of them, um, I'll look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions about any of the properties, Obviously, my, my information is on there. You can text me, call me, email me, 
and um, I'll be glad to answer anything that you need. And if there's something you, that's Terry. not on the website or that you're looking for, um, you can let me know what it is and I will do my best to find it for you. Thank you. That's a good point, Terry. Um, we're just looking at a, a sample, a small sample of properties that we picked out. Um, but Terry, as a realtor, can, can look at anything available for sale on the open market that may not already be here. So if you're, if you're looking at properties and you're looking for something specific, um, you know, she, she may be able to help you find something that might not already be on our website. Um, Terry, thank you for making yourself available at, you know, almost 10 o'clock, uh, your time. And, uh, obviously I think it's pretty clear, um, you know, you really enjoy this and speak from passion and, and experience. Right. Two and, more things. Um, two, two more yeah, things. I want to touch on real quick. I meant to, sorry. Um, the two things that people always ask me, I always get asked about the tax rate. And our tax rate in Lehigh is about 1.2%. The tax rate in Cape Coral can be anywhere from 1.4% to 1.7%, depending on the address. And um, I always get asked about hurricane insurance. Uh, hurricane insurance is included in your homeowner's insurance. It is not something that you have to buy separately. You can purchase uh, flood insurance extra if you want to. Lehigh Acres does not require require any flood insurance because it has the highest elevation in Lee County. In Cape Coral, it totally depends on the address. So I can I have to plug the plug the address in. Um, we try to stay away from properties that that need flood insurance, but you know it's it's very common around here where I live. I was here for what eight years in our house and we were never flood insurance and then all of a sudden they made us flood insurance. So we're we have, we're in a they consider us a flood zone even though you know we're really not but it's just part of what they do. So anyways, I just wanted to throw those two things in there also. Thank you. Yeah, those are really good points because property taxes obviously can, it, it can take the cash flow right out of the deal um, if they're too high. And that is, I think, one of the, the main reasons why the cash flow is, is so strong um, in the Florida market. So thanks, thanks for going over all that, Terry. Really appreciate it. I think you hit some really important points. Um, and you know the the three properties we just showed this this property in 1997 is the oldest of the three so as you can see we're really looking for newer properties and this has a brand new roof um which is um definitely a factor that we look at as investors to minimize our expenses as much as possible um but on the screen here you know we, we, each property we we put this red line around the monthly income so that number represents the amount of of cash flow coming to you every single month, most people consider that their positive cash flow. That's your income minus your, your, all your fixed expenses. And then below that red bar where Terry was talking about the maintenance, the vacancy, those are just purely estimates. Um, and we consider those to be reserves that you would want to set aside for future maintenance and, and vacancy. Um, but but that monthly income, that is money to you each month. You're not going to be paying vacancy expenses or maintenance expenses every month. It's just estimates. So um, these three properties, because they all have exceptionally high cash on cash returns, return on investment, um, they're in great neighborhoods, um, they're newer properties. So we look at just all these different factors to come up with properties that we feel comfortable with. And also, as Terry mentioned, this property is close to where you know, where she is. And, um, you know, these are already neighborhoods that our property manager is managing properties in. They, they already have properties just like these in some of the same neighborhoods. And our property managers give us their approval and give us their feedback before we recommend a property to an investor. So our property managers are already doing a rental analysis, providing us with um, estimated rents if it's not already rented. Um, so, you know, it, it goes through, the, all properties go through a vetting process from the realtor to the property manager to Marshall Reddick staff in-house to make sure that this fits really what, what you know, what we, what we would consider to be a viable investment. So switching gears for a moment, um, the second market that I wanted to cover tonight is the San Antonio, Texas market. Um, this is a market where Marshall Reddick has an office located um, just like Florida, we have a, a you know, great realtor, great property management already in place, 
and hundreds of properties that are already being managed for Marshall Reddit clients. So in any of our market, between these two or any other markets, um, these are all locations where we've been selling property for years and years, and our property managers have been working with Marsh Reddit clients for years and years. Um, and you're buying in some of the same neighborhoods and locations as hundreds of our other clients. Um, so just like Florida, San Antonio, very, very strong job market, also on the top 20 list of um, Forbes is where to invest in housing for 2017 and 2018. Uh, I mentioned San Antonio is home to four major military bases, Lackland Air Force Base, Fort Sam, Randolph, and I forget the fourth one, but um, it'll come back to me later. It'll come back to me. Um, four major military bases, 3% uh, unemployment rate, and extremely strong job growth. And, and both of these markets in, in Texas and Florida, neither state have state income tax. There's no state income tax in, in, in Texas or Florida. So that's, I think, part of the reason why um, so many employers and, and jobs are being created, uh, because they're both just such business-friendly markets. Um, Christina is our regional rep and realtor in the San Antonio market. Um, she has um, over a decade of experience in real estate and the mortgage industry. Um, many years ago, she was a, uh, a loan officer at Wells Fargo, so she's you know, just, just like all of our agents, very well versed in financing and real estate. Um, and also a, a delight to work with. I mean, you can see between Terry, Denise, um, Christina, we have very, very, not just intelligent, but very nice, uh, easy to work with realtors uh, who are all exceptional in customer service. Um, San Antonio is, a, it's an interesting market. It's not a, it's not a high appreciating market. But it's also a very stable, steady market that really hasn't seen any major decreases in value um, over the last several decades. Um, one thing that was pretty unique in San Antonio is you can look at 2007 and 2008, where many places across the country saw major declines in values. Uh, San Antonio remained steady. Um, they only had, between 2008 and 2009, about a 25 to 3% decrease in, in home values across the board. Um, where, you know, us out here in California, Phoenix, Vegas, a lot of those markets saw 20, 30% decreases and, and, of course, have now turned around considerably. But with San Antonio, it's just a very stable, steady market. Um, never a year with double-digit increase in value, never a year with double-digit decrease. Um, and a lot of that is just attributed to um, the, the climate in San Antonio, which all – real estate is, is driven by the job market and being the job market so strong, you don't really see a lot of people emotionally investing in San Antonio or moving there for anything except jobs. Um, I think because it's just less emotion involved in a market like San Antonio, it's, it's definitely been a very stable and steady market um, in terms of value over the years. And San Antonio, we also have a market data com forward slash San Antonio. Just like the Florida guide, it's about 20, 25 pages of updated content on um, home price appreciation trends, job markets, vacancy rates, major employers, um, you know, major attractions. So I would definitely recommend that you guys download these guides, It'll give you a lot of knowledge about each market that we maybe haven't covered here tonight. Uh, so First property I want to share with you is a new construction duplex in San Antonio. Um, this is actually in a development of all brand new construction duplexes. Um, this is a builder that we've worked with many, many, many times in the past. Um, these are actually considered um, luxury townhomes in each side. So each side is a three bed, two and a half bath, 1,350 square foot on each side. And uh, total purchase price, 360000 um, what's unique about this one, the reason I have it on, is that it's actually already completed. And most of the new construction that we get from builders is, um, you know, you, you, you purchase the lot and it's on a three to six month build out, but this one is already completed. Um, being it brand new, we reduced the maintenance rate to 5%. Um, but in, 
in 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 this you know in this market here we've got um, the uh, the monthly rent projections on each side at 1550 a month and we currently manage duplexes in and around the same development so we can speak from experience on on this property and and the, the rentability um, renters obviously love living in new construction brand new properties we're usually able to get a premium on the the rental values so just a good example of a new construction property that still has positive cash flow which is, is harder and harder to find, especially with brand new properties. Um, I did an estimate here at 30% down based on a 5.375 interest rate. And that's the interest rate that our lender is quoting us right now on um, two to four unit properties. We've got the current property taxes. Property taxes are obviously going to be higher in Texas. It's one of the things um, um, to evaluate, but you know, it, it's got a lot of pros that I, I believe make up for that as well with the rental amounts and the job growth, um, the demand, um, and the, um, the return on investment in a market like, like San Antonio. So um, we've got an insurance quote, the management fee is 7% in, in San Antonio. Um, there is a, a monthly HOA of $50 a month. And then um, after fixed expenses, you're looking at about $564 a month in positive cash flow. And then um, if you want to factor in the maintenance and, and vacancy, um, one thing that I want to mention is that in our projections, we don't have any estimates for rent increases. Um, you may find a lot of other companies will put like a, a little, you know, 2%, 3%, 5% a year increase in the rents. And we look at it on a very conservative basis. If rents don't even increase at all over time, which um, is very unlikely to, to not have them increase in these markets. So even though we're looking at the projected profit and the ROI on a 15-year basis, if, 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 the, if the owner holds it for 15 years, we still don't have any factors or, or building in any estimates for rent increase. So do keep that in mind that rent increases, you know, they, they, they will happen, especially in these markets over a 15-year period. Um, but we're looking at it as the most conservative basis on just what the numbers look like based on today's rent. Uh, this is a duplex in Converse, Texas, on the um, northeast side of Texas, near the medical um, area. This is also um, in a, um, a residential neighborhood. This is a B-class property. So this is a duplex uh, built in 1986. It's uh, two bed, one and a half bath per side, a little over a thousand square feet per side. But, you know, a little bit higher on the cash on cash return because it's not a brand new property. So it's listed for $195,000. Um, gross total rents uh, combined $1,770 a month. I know that's a pretty specific number, and that's because each side is currently occupied. Um, so um, the tenants on one side are on a, a um, uh, sorry, the tenants on, on one side have a lease until the end of this year. Tenants on the other side are in a lease until June 30th of next year. And of course, we're going to work with the tenants to get them to renew those leases. Uh, it's a great opportunity for somebody looking for a duplex in Texas below $200,000, which is definitely harder to find in these um, large growing markets. <clears throat> so here is a fourplex, and this is uh, brand new. Of course, we're looking at the um, blueprints, the, the floor plan right now. Um, brand new construction um, fourplex set to be completed May of next year. Five hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars total, um, and then five thousand one hundred and eighty are the total um, combined rents. And we do manage a lot of very similar fourplexes in um, San Antonio, Texas. So the rents um, that we put in here of twelve ninety-five per side, those are the rents that we're already getting on the same fourplexes with the the same the same builder so there's a very um, realistic rent projections or uh, rent amounts that are on here so looking at a fourplex um, I mean to be able to buy a brand new building you know almost 5,000 square feet for about 565,000 uh, I know compared to most of the US is is still a very very good deal um, but if you are looking at fourplexes um, 
in Texas, you know, this, this builder, this type of, of property, it's, it provides, you know, the lowest price for a new fourplex with the highest rents um, and, and still some, some great positive cash flow. So we're going to run a second poll, and then we've got about five minutes left, uh, a few a little, little tidbits here to wrap up, but I do want to run one more poll to test and see how many of you were paying attention on the properties that we just went over. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you caught that part, as that was you know, one of the more important parts of the presentation. But the, uh, the question that I'd love to ask is, uh, which property of the, the six properties that we just showed interests you the most. So I've actually got these listed in order. Um, the first two properties Terry showed were those two duplexes, both built around 2005, 2006. Um, both of them had tenants in them in place. So whether that's your, the one that interested you or the triplex that had the new roof in Florida or the brand new duplex that I shared in San Antonio or the, um, the occupied duplex built in 1986 that had renters in on both sides, or the last property, which was the brand new construction fourplex in San Antonio. So I'll give you guys a few, uh, about five or 10 more seconds to choose an option wisely. Um, I do want to mention this is binding. So whatever you choose, you end up purchasing. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Late night humor, totally joking, nothing binding. <laughs> now everybody's changing their answers. Um, Late night humor here. Denise and I have been here for a long time today, so <laughs> we uh, crack a joke here and there. So I'll give you guys a few more seconds to um, choose an option, and then I'll, I'll share the results. Everybody stopped voting after I mentioned it was <laughs> binding. <laughs> we're gonna take it back. And thanks, guys. I know we've gone past an hour, but I do want to appreciate you all staying with us. Um, and hopefully you're, you're gaining a lot of good information. We really do appreciate you um, taking the time here with us. All right. Get your poll responses in, and I'm going to share the results. So, very interesting. Um, so it looked like uh, exactly the same percentage between the, the Florida duplexes and the triplex, 19% for both, 6% um, for the new construction duplex in San Antonio, 17% for the occupied duplex in San Antonio, and then 39% for the fourplex in San Antonio. I'm wondering if it's because that was the last property we showed, and maybe that's the, most, the one that you remember the most, or maybe the majority of you are interested in the... Uh, the fourplex in, in San Antonio, but answers all across the board, many, many, many different types of investors on the, um, on the call tonight. So um, it looks like everybody got a vote here today. Everybody, everybody was accounted for. So thank you guys uh, for sharing your, your opinions and thoughts on that. So just to wrap up here, um, to record the presentation and you guys will be receiving that over email tomorrow. As Terry mentioned, we have a lot of property on our website. So if you're not already looking at it, you can go on the website, um, select invest in properties and filter based on the markets, but you can take advantage of so many different filters on price and um, cash on cash return, return on investment. Um, the biggest thing that I would stress here tonight is to have an opportunity to talk to Denise and our advisors. And um, as an advisor, Denise is giving you the opportunity to schedule a free consultation call um, that could be as long or as short as you want it to be. You can ask as many or as little questions as you want. But Denise's role as an advisor is to help you figure out your, your why, your how, your when, your what, your where, and your who. And it's very important to go through that process step by step, and we start with helping you set your goals to figure out what it is you're looking to accomplish in five years, 10 years, 15 years from now on, on a financial level, um, and also what options exist. So Denise will go over financing options for conventional or commercial financing, 
Um, she'll connect you with lenders that we work with. She can go over kind of how the whole financing process works and help you determine what options you have available. Um, we also help you figure out what, uh, what time frame makes sense. So setting goals uh, based on a time frame, we know that nothing gets accomplished unless there's a, a time frame attached to it. So Denise can kind of help you create a long-term five, 10 year plan and then setting um, short-term and intermediate goals in between. So maybe helping you purchase your first property by June of next year or by the end of this year, whatever your time frame is, we'll work on your time frame, not ours. Denise will help you figure out what criteria, what property classes make sense. And then based on your criteria, um, you know, looking at Florida, San Antonio, which markets make the most sense for you, and then introducing you to all the key players. And so uh, Terry Duffy and Christina Dorier are our reps in Florida and San Antonio. But Denise will be able to introduce you to our mortgage lenders, our insurance agents, everybody that you need to um, work with throughout this entire process. Um, Denise, I've got your contact information on there. Um, if there's anything that you wanted to mention before we wrap up, um, I can hand it over to you. Um, folks on the call, I would suggest um, grabbing Denise's email address and sending her an email. That way she can schedule a call with you at a time that's convenient for you. You can bring all your questions on the call. Um, Denise is very patient, um, very easy to talk to, and will be able to go over all your questions on the, on the call. Um, you can also visit marshreddick.com forward slash consultation um, to complete a consultation form. Either one of those options work. Um, Denise, I'll hand it over to you um, if you have any, uh, any last words you'd like to mention. Yeah, no, I just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight, and I hope that you found uh, the information valuable. I look forward to speaking to you um, and assisting you anywhere with uh, wherever you are with your journey on, on developing your real estate portfolio. Our company's been around for 40 years, and we um, advocate that real estate is uh, a long-term um, building, uh, wealth building strategy. So we look at working with you um, with one investment and maybe you know any future investments that you uh, plan on acquiring. So um, I'm here for you for any questions or uh, any um, if you're ready to take the next, next step to, to talk about what that step, next step would be for you in particular. So again, thank you for joining us and have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you being on the call. We look forward to talking to you soon. Have a good night.